The Adventures of Bayou Billy is one of the most difficult games for the NES. At first glance, it appears to be an average beat-em-up game, similar to Double Dragon, but upon reaching the game's second stage, you'll discover that this is something much more ambitious. In addition to the beat-em-up mode, this game also features on-rail shooting levels, which can be played with a controller or the zapper light gun. And later on, there are even driving levels similar to Road Blasters. While many late-release NES games featured multiple game modes, for one that first came out in 1988, having three distinct gameplay experiences was practically unheard of. Bayou Billy was created by Konami, one of the greatest developers of NES games. Konami brought us tons of classic titles like Contra, Metal Gear, and Castlevania. The Adventures of Bayou Billy tells the story of Billy West, the legendary swamp superhero that was raised in the bayou by a family of gators. Although the Australian outback is way different from the Louisiana bayou, it's hard to look at Billy's in-game character sprite and not think of Paul Hogan's Crocodile Dundee. That's a knife. That's a knife. Billy's girlfriend is the beautiful ex-Miss Louisiana, Annabelle Bon Vivant. Described as a cross between Scarlett O'Hara and Ellie Mae Clampett, she is definitely the most attractive woman on the bayou. Billy takes offense to the crimes of Godfather Gordon, the self-proclaimed gangster king of Bourbon Street, so he burns down the headquarters of Gordon's international smuggling operation, which was disguised as a restaurant called Gordon's Red Beans and Rice Warehouse. In retaliation, Gordon does as all cliched mustache twirling video game villains must do, and kidnaps Annabelle. Billy must punch, kick, whip, and shoot his way through nine challenging stages until he comes face to face with the Gangster King and the vicious heirs to his empire. The original version that released in Japan for the Famicom was called Mad City, and while that version looks very similar to the one we received in North America, the game actually got a massive overhaul during the localization process. Background elements were changed, enemies got different colored outfits, and they added in some digitized voice samples which were quite the novelty at the time. The Adventures of Fire Billy. The most shocking difference, however, was the dramatic increase in difficulty. Enemies take more hits to kill, and in some cases are completely changed. You get fewer bullets for the on-rail shooting segments, and the driving is completely different. There are no big curves in the road on the Japanese version, and you can't even hit the poles on the side. Even crazier, you get a life bar, can survive multiple hits, and can find items to restore your health, a feature completely removed for the English language version. Konami also removed the bad endings from the game, and gave Annabelle a much more revealing outfit in the between-level cutscenes. The game was a decent success for Konami when it released in North America in 1989. It was never as popular as other Konami games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Castlevania, but it was popular enough to get a comic book series published by Archie Comics, and to be featured on an episode of Captain and the Game Master. Konami never made a sequel, but they would use a similar mixed genre format for their highly underrated Lone Ranger game several years later. In modern times, Bayou Billy is still appreciated by players looking for a worthy challenge. It did not appear on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, but the level of difficulty may have just been too much for them. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. The enemies are extremely aggressive, 
and barely flinch when you hit them. They will even steal items other enemies have dropped. The bosses will truly test your skills, and the driving sections can easily drain all of your lives. You do not get infinite continues in this game, so if you die one too many times, it's game over. But what if I told you easy ways to deal with difficult enemies in the beat-em-up stages, including ways to despawn enemies so you won't have to fight them at all? What if I told you the best strategies for completing the treacherous driving levels? And what if I told you how to defeat all of the game's challenging bosses? Even Gangster King Gordon himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, the adventures of Bayou Billy. Now you may be thinking, why is he selecting practice mode? This game only has nine stages, we can just practice by playing the real game. And that's true, but by completing these practice levels, we're going to get bonuses we can use in the actual game. This is also a good time to quickly go over the basics. The B button will throw a punch, and the A button kicks. The kicks are a lot stronger than the punches, but if you're ever standing in water, you won't be able to kick, so you may actually get more mileage out of the punches than you would think. Pressing A and B at the same time will do a jump kick, and that's your most powerful attack. You'll notice that some enemies will drop items like the raw meat that refills your health, but other enemies can pick it up, and you'll have to hit that enemy to make them drop it again. This guy dropped our first weapon, the knife, or as the instruction manual calls it, the footlong blade, and we will press B to use it. It replaces your punch attack. You can't actually hold two weapons at the same time, not including the gun, of course. So if you pick up a second knife or another weapon, it will overwrite whatever weapon you were originally holding. In this case, we now have a stick. The game officially calls it the ugly stick, but we can use this to give Billy extra range and also deal a lot more damage. The stick is one of the better weapons in the game, and it's the best one that we're going to find here in the practice mode. The knife is very effective for giving you extra range, and it's nice to be able to hit enemies from far away, but every time you use the knife, it gets dropped onto the ground, and the enemies will have an opportunity to pick it up and use it against you, so the stick is a lot safer than the knife. Continue to use the stick to defeat these enemies. These ones are officially called Toulouse Le Attack. Many of the enemies in this game have clever pun-type names, but if there's a pun there, I'm not really getting the joke with this one. And that's it. We've completed the practice mode street fighting stage, and our reward is a meatball. Now, what is a meatball officially? Well, it's going to appear in the upper right corner of the screen as an L icon. If you were to run out of health in the street fighting stages, it will completely refill your life bar. The meatball will be used automatically the first time you run out of health, and you do not get a second one, so be careful not to waste it. The second practice stage that I recommend we attempt is the driving mode. The driving stages can easily suck away all of your lives in this game, so I don't recommend that you even attempt the main game until you are able to complete the driving practice. Up will make you go faster, and down is the brakes in this mode. 
Pressing the A button will launch a grenade that can take out the smuggler planes, and the B button will shoot the guns that can take out the cars. You will not be able to use your guns while ever you have a grenade in the air, so keep that in mind whenever you launch one. The most dangerous thing is probably the small rocks that appear in the road, so you need to watch out for those. Definitely slow down whenever you go around a curve, or you may hit one of the poles on the side. If you're getting close to the pole, you may want to actually stop completely and then press left or right to move yourself away from the pole. You should have plenty of time to complete this practice mode. So those are the main things you need to worry about. Also those puddles of water will make you slide whenever you go around a turn, so you'll need to go even slower if you've hit one of those puddles. You can see I came to a full stop there to avoid that pole. That's something that you just might have to do. You can avoid the bombs that the planes drop. So if you see one getting dropped, make sure to move to the left or the right to get away from it. And eventually you'll reach the flag. And the prize for completing the driving level is an extra life, which really is a pretty nice reward. The final practice mode is the shoot 'em up game, and you'll notice there's a mode A and a mode B. Mode A requires that you use a light gun, so if you don't have a light gun or you don't have a full setup that involves using a CRT television, then you should choose game B, where you'll be able to use a controller and it will move the crosshairs around the screen. You also get fewer bullets whenever you're doing the light gun, which is probably fair. It may be a little bit easier to be accurate using the light gun. I think using the controller is a slight advantage, but if you have a light gun set up, that is certainly more fun. Basically, you just need to shoot the enemies here before they shoot you. Sometimes the enemies will stop and turn. That means they're about to fire, so you really need to get to those enemies and shoot them right away. The men with the bazookas are called Mardi Gras, and whenever they shoot you with a bazooka, you will be able to shoot down the missile that they launch, so you will have a chance at that. Just continue to let the screen scroll. The guy that throws the dynamite is called Mr. TNT, and you will be able to shoot the dynamite out of the air to avoid taking damage from it as well. At some point, the screen is going to stop scrolling, and then we'll have to fight a bunch of enemies. So that will happen right here. And one thing that you need to be very careful of is to not run out of bullets. We just found an item that gives us more bullets, but if you run out of bullets, you actually die. So try to be fairly accurate with your shots. It doesn't matter how much health you have either. Whenever you complete the shoot 'em up game, the reward is a B icon that you'll have in the upper right of the screen. And the way that that works is if you ever run out of bullets when you're playing one of these shoot 'em up stages, it will refill your bullets entirely. So that's how that works. I don't think that the bonus for beating the shoot 'em up stages is very important, especially compared to the other ones, the extra health bar and the extra life. In my opinion, the shooting stages aren't that difficult, so feel free to skip that last practice mode. Now that all that practice is finished, let's get into the main game. Before we start stage one, we see an opening cutscene. It seems that Gordon has kidnapped Annabelle, and that's the last mistake he's going to get to make. I guess considering that he's a gangster king, that calling the police is out of the question, so we're going to have to fight our way to his estate, and he says that there are many obstacles for us to overcome. I guess that by obstacles, he's referring to the leagues of henchmen that are going to have to be killed for this transgression. And with that, we're on to stage one, the Bayou Backyard. As far as first levels on the NES go, the Bayou Backyard is actually quite difficult. This first Toulouse Le Attack enemy can easily be defeated by just using your kicks, but you'll want to get good at using the jump kicks for maximum effectiveness. 
In this area, we'll fight two of those to lose the attack enemies. And the one in the pink is a little bit more dangerous. He can do jump kick attacks on you. Over here, you want to walk to the right just far enough to spawn a single enemy. If you move too far right, you'll have to fight three of them at the same time. Once he's defeated, move a bit more to the right and spawn the other two to lose the attack enemies. This time, the one that's wearing blue will drop a raw meat whenever you hit him, but the other enemies can pick it up, so watch out for that. Whenever you do decide to grab it, it will refill your health to the max. Use jump kicks and regular kicks to defeat these enemies and try to be a little bit strategic about when you pick up that raw meat item so that you can maximize how much health you have when you finish off those enemies. Over here some birds will try to attack you so walk out of the way of them and when you get into the water you want to just start jump kicking your way to the right so that you don't get bit by the alligators. Over here we'll meet a new enemy type. These guys are called Thugs McGraw. The Thugs McGraw can pick up rocks and throw them at you, but you cannot pick up the rocks and throw them back. Whenever you see a Thug McGraw holding a rock, you want to jump kick that guy, which will cause him to drop the rock and then he won't be able to use it against you. One of the three Thugs also will drop a stick weapon for you to use. The stick is extremely effective for fighting the enemies in this area. Try to use the stick to attack these thugs at long range so they won't be able to counterattack you with their kicks. Whenever they're defeated, you'll head to the right and there's another to lose the attack enemy here. And this guy actually has a knife, or the foot long blade as the instruction manual calls it. So you want to get him to drop it, but you don't actually want the knife. You definitely want the stick for the enemy that's coming up next. We just had to get away from the gators before, but in this area, we have to actually fight them. If you don't move too far right, you'll be able to fight one gator at a time. You actually have to fight two of them here. But if you stand right by this wooden platform and just rapidly attack with your stick, you should be able to defeat the gator with no problem. So just stand here and just keep mashing the B button. Whenever the gator is defeated, you'll need to move forward to spawn the second gator and just stand here and mash the B button. This is a trick that I figured out from playing the game for a while. And sometimes the gator will get stuck up in the upper area and you'll need to kind of taunt him a bit to make him move down into your area and then come back up to where the wooden platform is and you can just start mashing him with the stick again. So just stand here, keep pressing the B button, and eventually the gator will go down. And you'll notice that he dropped some items. One of them is a raw meat, and the other one is another stick. And if you search around in the water, you should be able to find them. Quickly stand in this position and attack the first scuba diver that you see on the left until he dies. These guys are known as Jacques Kill Stows. And the one wearing white has a bulletproof vest on, so you'll need to jump kick him until he turns gray before you attack him with your stick or with the guns that the Jacques Kilstows on the left side will drop. Otherwise, the bullets will bounce off of him or your stick will break. Now we have removed the bulletproof vest and actually picked it up ourselves, and we can press select to use the gun that we found in the water to take out those other enemies. This Jacques Stow is easy to defeat by getting out of the water on the left. A few hits will take him out and we'll save all of our bullets. Over here we'll meet a new enemy, Hurricane Hank, who can quickly be dispatched with a couple shots from our Magnum gun. Another Jacques Stow will come out and we can use the same strategy that we used on the previous one by jumping out of the water and attacking him with our stick. And over here, we're going to see another Hurricane Hank, which we will want to shoot with our gun. Be careful not to waste your bullets. You need to be perfectly lined up or you will miss. Remember, we need to use jump kicks on the Jacques Kilstows wearing white because they have a bulletproof vest on. But as soon as they lose that vest, everything is fair game and you can shoot them dead. Once you get out of the water here, we need to get past some more gators, so just quickly jump through this section. Just jump kick your way across and the gators should miss you. So just keep walking to the right and jump kicking whenever you see a gator pop out of the water. And when you make it to the end, 
We have completed stage one. Before we move on to the next stage, we see a brief cutscene with a message from Gordon, and he says that Annabelle is safe with him. Well, yeah, I guess it's good that I'm not coming to rescue a corpse, you weirdo. Thanks for the message, I guess. Stage two is known as Deep in the Heart of the Dixie Swamp, and this is a shoot 'em up stage. Because we're playing on mode B, we will be moving a crosshair around the screen using the controller, and you want to look for the enemies that are hiding in the background. Whenever you shoot them, they'll drop items for you to pick up, like this bulletproof vest that will prevent damage for a short amount of time, or this star item which when shot will clear all the enemies that are on the screen. There are some other enemies in this area, the ones with the guns are known as Schwartz and Iger, and the ones carrying the bazookas are called Mardi Gras. The scrolling stops here for a moment, and enemies will just start dropping out of the sky, which will have to shoot or risk being shot by them. Sometimes they'll drop items, like the one that dropped a health refill, which was a nice little bonus for us. And after we do this for a short time, the screen will start scrolling once again. As we get moving again to the right, remember to look for the enemies that are hiding in the background. Those are the ones that will drop items. And over here, we can actually get an extra life, which is what that flashing icon was. Just keep shooting the enemies, and once again, the screen will stop scrolling, and we'll have to fight more bad guys that drop out of the sky. Pay attention for ones that stop for a moment and aim their gun at you. Those are the ones that are about to shoot, and are the ones that you need to deal with right away. Once those guys have been taken out, the screen will start moving again. And if an enemy shoots a bazooka at you, you can actually stop the projectile by shooting it out of the air. So that could be a good strategy if you miss one. And over here, it's time to fight the boss. This helicopter is known as the Whirlybird, and the enemies it drops are snipers called Wild Bill Yonders. You'll need about 50 bullets to defeat the boss, so if you're on the low side, you'll want to focus most of your shots on the helicopter itself and not on the Wild Bills. Although you should shoot a few Wild Bills when you can to avoid taking too much damage. Whenever the chopper's on the screen, just hammer it with bullets, and sooner or later, its life bar will be depleted, and we'll be on to Stage 3. But before we move on, we'll get another message from Gordon. How is he sending these messages anyway? Bayou Billy definitely didn't have an iPhone back in 1985 so that he could FaceTime. Is it some kind of telepathy? I mean, that would be interesting. Well, Stage 3 is known as Gator Alley, and it's another beat-em-up level. If you didn't die in Stage 2, you should still have your bulletproof vest from Stage 1, and it will actually protect you from the knife that this first enemy throws. If we jump kick the Thug McGraw, we can get a stick, and if we go in the water down here, we'll be able to use the stick to attack these two enemies from a position that makes it very difficult for them to counter. Once they're defeated, move a bit forward into the water, and we're going to have to face some more gators. The good news is we can use the same exact strategy that we used in Stage 1. Just stay here by the wooden platforms and mash the B button. If the gator gets away and goes near the upper part, you'll need to lure them back down to the bottom, so you may need to move away from the platform in that case. But once you get them down in this area, just keep mashing the button, and they will be defeated quite quickly. So just hang out here, mash the B button, and whenever they're defeated, you can search the water for some raw meat that they may have dropped. So that's something that you might need, but if you do the strategy correctly, you probably won't have taken any damage anyways. Looks like we're gonna have to lure the gator back down, okay. If you do search the water, there could be a knife that was dropped, and you might not want the knife for the next part, but it doesn't actually matter that much. Just make sure you don't pick it up while you're still fighting the gator. And that's it, that guy's defeated. Watch out for the birds as you move forward to the right. 
And over here, you notice a rock, so of course there's going to be some Thug McGraws to fight. One of them has a stick for you if you don't already have one. But remember that you'll want to use your jump kicks on them if they're holding a rock. Try to stay as far away from them as you can while you're hitting them with a stick, and they should go down easily. The fact of the matter is that Stage 3 may be easier than Stage 1, with the exception of the boss at the end, which does complicate things a bit. Once the thugs are defeated, move to the right, and we will face two more to lose the attack enemies. One of them will actually drop a raw meat for us to pick up, but you don't want to pick it up right away unless you're very low on health. Preferably, you'd be able to kill these two enemies first and then pick up the raw meat. It may be possible if it's far enough to the right on the screen that you can actually spawn the next enemies without getting the meat, but that doesn't seem to be the case here, so we'll grab it and move forward. Do you think it was intentional that all three of these guys showed up to work in matching pink outfits? Or is it like a prom nightmare? How embarrassing! Two of them are carrying knives and one of them has a stick. You'll want to use your stick to quickly finish them off, but make sure to grab a knife before you move forward, because that's the weapon that we're going to use to defeat the boss. We can practice using the knife on this enemy. It's a very effective weapon for attacking from far away, but of course you see the downside, you have to pick it up each time. And against the boss it's even worse, because he automatically picks it up. And here he is, this is Louis Torture. Don't use your knife right away, it'll just bounce off. You need to jump kick him a few times so that he drops his bulletproof vest first. Once you grab his vest, press B to use your knife from far away, and then he'll get it so you'll need to jump kick him a few more times to get the knife back. Whenever you jump kick the boss, you want to jump kick him and then jump kick again so that you move through the boss and it will make it more difficult for him to counter attack you. So just alternate between using the knives and the jump kicks and you should be able to shank this guy and move on to stage 4. And now another message from Gordon. It seems that he's surprised that we were able to do away with his men, but now he's sending in his best guys. Good advice here, Gordon. This is Bayou Billy you're dealing with, so unless you send professional assassins, you're just going to watch them die. Stage 4 is titled I-10, The Road to New Orleans. And this is our first of two back-to-back -back driving stages. In my opinion, the driving stages are the most difficult part of the game, so hopefully you took the time to use the practice mode to get good at them. Holding up will make you go faster, but pressing down will activate your brakes and slow the car, and that's something that you're going to want to make sure to do whenever you go around turns, so that you don't slide off and hit one of the poles on the side of the road, which is instant death. You do have a timer that you need to worry about, so you may feel the need to go faster, but running out of time is not as big of a disaster as you may think. It's not an instant game over. Your car will just blow up, you'll lose a life, but you'll get a whole new set of time and you'll be able to continue right from that point. So running out of time is not as bad as it seems. Of course, ideally you won't lose any lives. And one thing that you need to pay attention for while you're driving through is we're looking for the first brown car which I just destroyed right there. That's a signal that the rocks are going to start appearing in the road. So whenever you see the first brown car, you definitely want to slow down a bit and be vigilant looking for those rocks. Hitting a rock is instant death, so that was one that we just went by, but there's going to be another one pretty soon. So you do not want to be going at full speed, or it can be very difficult to avoid the rocks, so there was a second one. There probably won't be any rocks for a few moments after the third rock there, but continue to look for them because they will pop up again before this stage is over. Pressing the B button will allow you to shoot your guns to destroy the cars, and pressing the A button will launch that grenade to take out the smuggler planes. And that was a gas can that I just picked up, which will restore some of our time. So if you see a gas can, try to get it, but it is not a mandatory item. It's more important in the next level, 
but it does seem to appear randomly, so just keep your eyes peeled for gas cans. Sometimes it looks like a blue car at first, so you'll want to look for that shape and notice when it's not a car but a gas can instead. If you hit a wet patch in the road, whenever you start going around a curve, you may need to go slower. So feel free to go completely stopped if you need to, to get around the poles on the side of the road. That's something that you just might have to do if you hit one of those water spots. It is possible to hit the cars with the grenades you use to take out the planes, but it's difficult to do that so you're going to want to rely on your guns to take out the cars. And remember, you will not be able to use your guns whenever you have a grenade in the air. So keep that in mind whenever you launch a grenade. Whenever you get to the flag, you'll reach the end, you'll get some bonus points, and we'll be on to stage five. Gordon's message this time is a strange one. First, it starts out like a taunt, but in the second part of the message, he tells us that the road is full of obstacles and warns us to watch out. As if he's concerned about our safety? I mean, you put the obstacles there, Gordon. What are you doing? This guy makes no sense. Stage 5 is Superdome Drive, and it's the second and last driving stage in the game. I feel like this one is a little bit easier than stage four because there's no rocks in the road, but there are a lot more turns, so the time can get to be an issue here. Instead of wet patches in stage five, there's a bunch of oil slicks on the road, and you really want to avoid those because they're going to slow you down and they could cause you to run out of time and lose a life because of time being elapsed. Remember though that running out of time is not an instant game over, so it's not as bad as it seems. Stay on the road as best you can. I'm definitely dealing with the oil right now, which is bad, and you're going to need to get good at using those grenades to take out the helicopters. They seem to come in much higher numbers this time. In the Japanese version, you have a life bar, which I really wish they wouldn't have taken away for the English version. But I do like a lot of the other improvements that they made for the car driving levels. They are a lot more exciting here on the NES than they were on the Japanese Famicom. Those extra curves and being able to hit the poles on the side of the road definitely increase the intensity. And at the end of the Japanese levels, they put in an invincible car, which you just have to kind of deal with on the road. And they removed that for the NES version, so I think that was a plus. I wish they would have made all of these upgrades, but still included the life bar. That would have been a nice middle ground, and I think would have resulted in a much more fun game. But what we're left with is a very challenging driving level, so remember, you don't want to go too fast. It'll be a lot easier to deal with the challenges if you're going a little bit slower than the maximum 180 miles per hour. It's better if you keep it at like 140-ish. And remember to push down whenever you're going around the curves. Do your best to avoid the oil slicks and shoot any cars that are in your way, but you need to wait until the right time to shoot off those grenades because you won't be able to use your gun whenever you're firing a grenade. And that's really all there is to it. Keep your eyes open for a gas can, the time is definitely an issue here in stage 5 because you need to go slower around the turns and you can lose a lot of time if you hit some of those oil slicks and have to go extra slow around the curves. So if you see a gas can, you certainly want to make it a priority to pick it up. Right now we are getting very low on the time. I'm worried that we're going to lose a life because of running out of time, but I'm trying to pick up the pace here. There's just a ton of turns at the end, and there's also oil slicks to avoid, so you can't go too fast or you'll just hit the poles on the side of the road. All right. Yeah, one second left, but we made it. We would have just lost one life if we ran out of time, so it would have been all right. Gordon's message this time is getting a little bit more desperate. He tells us we should give up and go back home and catch some alligators. Why? Are you getting worried, Gordon? Afraid you're going to get beat with the ugly stick? Stage 6 is the French Quarter, ooh la la. 
and we're back to good old beat em up mode. These enemies are called Cajun Cutthroats, and as a kid I always used to think they were women, but nope, they're just girly looking guys. Your jump kicks are the best way to fight them, and if you can get them caught in a loop where you're jump kicking left, right, left, right, you can defeat them very quickly. Another Cajun Cutthroat will approach from the left side here. Use your jump kicks to quickly take him out. And you'll notice that I still have the bulletproof vest from stage 3 because we never died during any of the driving levels, but that may not be the case for you. The driving levels are very easy to lose at least a few lives in, so there's a good chance that you won't have any equipment that you had at the end of stage 3. Use your jump kicks to take out two more of these Cajun cutthroats, but they are not the only type of enemy that we'll find here in the French Quarter. Once these two cutthroats are defeated, we'll move on to the right, where we'll meet a new enemy, Migraine Mike. Migraine Mike swings a hammer mace, and you'll be able to defeat him much in the same way that you fight the Cajun cutthroats. Just use your jump kicks and go back and forth across his body until he's dead. On this screen, you'll need to fight a Migraine Mike and a Cajun Cutthroat. So use your jump kicks or even your regular kicks to take them out one at a time. Once they're defeated, head on over to the right where we'll find two Migraine Mikes. The one on the right is the one I usually like to defeat first, but the one on the left is holding a raw meat item which will refill our health, so if you're very low on health, you may want to fight the one on the left first. But if you're doing well on health, you want to get the meat a little bit later, so I take out the one on the right first. Either way, once they're defeated, head on over to the right, where we'll fight another Migraine Mike Cajun Cutthroat combination. I like to take out the Migraine Mike first, but it looks like they were nice enough to group themselves next to each other this time, so I was able to deal a lot of damage to that Cutthroat and take out the Migraine Mike afterwards. Over here we meet an important new enemy type. These guys are called AL Hertz, and they bring with them the best weapon in the game, the Whip. Or as it's called in the instruction manual, the Whipper Snapper. The whip has very good range, so you can hit enemies from far away. Watch how we can easily deal with this Cajun Cutthroat using the whip. Although you do have to be careful, this guy has a knife that he could try to use on you. But the most important thing about the whip is it's still effective on enemies that are wearing a bulletproof vest. So that's why we want to keep the whip for as long as we can. Aside from the gun, which you would still be able to use simultaneously with the whip, nothing is better than this. You certainly don't want to get any other weapons and overwrite the whip, so be careful of that knife over there. And just make your way to the right where you'll fight a single AL Hurt. We were able to fight two AL Hurts before, so fighting one now is not that big of a deal. Keep him at the maximum whip range, and just keep on hitting him until he goes down. The whip is going to be key to completing the rest of the game, so you don't want to lose it, although you will find a number of enemies that will drop whips moving forward. One of the AL Hurts here actually has a stick. So I picked up the stick and then I grabbed another whip so that it would overwrite the stick and it would go away. There's a lot of whips to work with here, so we shouldn't be too worried about losing them. And we're going to encounter a new enemy coming up soon, but first we have to take out two more of these Cajun Cutthroats. They are very easy to defeat once you have the whip. And over here, here's that new enemy type. This guy is called Blacky Blue. And you want to whip him a few times and then try to get some space between you and Blacky and then start whipping him again. If you don't do that, he will be able to get close enough to you to start damaging you, so just a couple whips and then try to get some more space. You may even need to use a jump kick to get some extra space between you and Blacky Blue. But you may also be able to get him hung up on some of the background elements like that pole. Over here, we'll face another Cajun Cutthroat, which is going to seem very easy after fighting those Blacky Blues. The Blacky Blue enemies are very similar to the boss of Stage 3, just shrunk down in size. 
There are three Cajun cutthroats to whip here, all wearing different colored shirts. And the one wearing pink actually has a raw meat item, so you may be desperately low on health at this point in the French Quarter, and will be very happy to be able to pick that up. So grab that meat whenever you need it to fill up your health, and then take out the other two Cajun cutthroats. Over here we're going to encounter the first enemy with a bulletproof vest that we've found since gaining the whip. You'll notice how that whenever you start whipping him, he'll lose his weapon first, and then after whipping him a few more times, that's when he'll lose the vest. You'll know that these blacky blue enemies are wearing a bulletproof vest based on what color shirt they're wearing, so if you see a white shirt, that means no vest, and if he has a brown shirt on, that means he is wearing a bulletproof vest. But it doesn't matter too much if you have the whip, you'll still be effective either way. Don't forget that you will need to disarm them from their weapon before you can make them lose the bulletproof vest. This will be important later in the game when you might actually want to shoot them with some bullets. Just keep whipping this guy, he didn't even lose his bulletproof vest. And we'll pick up these weapons and then get the whip to overwrite them. And that brings us to the end of the stage. Now I did promise to show you how to despawn some enemies, and this is the stage where you can do it. Slowly advance the screen to the right until just the point where the enemy appears, and then just start moving up and down a few times until they disappear from the right side of the screen. It can be difficult to do it on the ones that appear from the left, and it seems like you'll only be able to make this trick work on the Cajun cutthroat enemies, but there are just a ton of them in this stage, so it is very effective. Over here we can despawn some more of them. Here we go, right here. Move up and down, and then they're gone. We can move forward, no Cajun cutthroats. It's not going to work on Migraine Mike, but after we defeat this Migraine Mike, you will notice that it does still work whenever there's a Migraine Mike and a Cajun Cutthroat enemy. So over here, there would be a Cajun Cutthroat that appears on the right side, and we actually were able to despawn him without him even showing up on the screen. Pretty cool. And yeah, you can do that on all the Cajun Cutthroats in the stage, but be careful not to do it on the ones that drop food. Here between stages 6 and 7, we get another message from Gordon. He wants to know if we liked the present he sent us. Uh, which thing was the present? The whip? Yeah, we like the whip a lot. Thanks, Gordon. Stage 7, known as Gordon's Gateway, aka Murderer's Row, is the second and last shoot 'em up stage. Whenever you see the enemies on motorcycles, which are known as the accelerators, you definitely want to try to shoot them because they are the enemy type on this stage that actually will drop items for you. And it's going to be essential that you kill a lot of them to be able to replenish your stock of bullets. The gangster looking guys running around with pistols are known as Vito the Angelo. And not all of them will shoot at you, but many of them will, so shoot as many of those Vitos as you can. That one just popped up out of the sewer. In front of this jazz bar, the screen will stop scrolling and we'll have to fight some Vito Langelos that'll pour into the screen. Try to conserve your bullets and be accurate, but take out as many of these guys as possible. It is possible to shoot the enemies that are inside through the windows, and you may need to to avoid getting shot. Over here, there's another spot where the screen stops scrolling. So just keep shooting these enemies. Watch for ones that are appearing inside of the building. Those ones can be difficult to spot. So keep your eyes open for the ones that appear behind the windows. Sometimes they'll stop and shoot at you and you'll take damage. Just keep fighting these guys until the screen starts scrolling again. And there's a health refill, which is very helpful at this point. Once things get moving again, there's a guy on a motorcycle that's easy to miss, but if you can take him out, he'll drop a bulletproof vest, which will be very handy moving forward. It's going to prevent damage for a short period of time, and the enemies get pretty aggressive through this part as we move closer to the boss. Taking out that guy on a motorcycle will drop the mythical hourglass item, which is very rare. 
but it will make your bullets free for a short amount of time so you could rapidly mash the button and you won't lose any bullets. It's a very nice item to use especially when you're playing with the controller instead of the zapper because rapidly clicking the zapper can be kind of difficult to do. Over in front of this gate we'll meet the boss, Lightning Rod and Kid Creole. I like to focus my shots on Lightning Rod, the smaller of the two guys, because whenever you're shooting him, you'll be able to block his knives that he throws, but whenever you have a chance to, you should put some bullets on Kid Creole to keep him from constantly shooting you with his machine gun. You will need to kill both of them to move forward, but it is a lot easier once one of them is defeated. And with that, we finish Stage 7, and it's time for another message from Gordon. This time he says he's going to have a party for us, but it's going to be the last one. Are you hearing the things that you're saying, Gordon? Because you sound ridiculous. Stage 8 is called Hitman's Yard, and it's going to be all beat-em-up stages from here on out. At the beginning, there's three AL Hurt enemies, and these guys all have guns, so if you lost a life in Stage 7, you won't still have a bulletproof vest to protect yourself, so be careful when you're jump kicking these guys until they give up their guns, and then press select to turn the guns back on them. Switch back to conventional weapons because over here are three blacky blue enemies, all with bulletproof vests. The one on the left will throw a knife, so if you wait for him to throw that knife and then attack him, you can make him drop his vest right away. And that's probably the most effective one of the three blacky blues to fight first. One of them will have a whip for you, so if you don't already have a whip, you can get one from this battle here. And once these guys don't have their vests anymore, you can finish them off with your gun. Make your way to the right and continue holding the whip. This is like a mini boss. His name is Swamp Gas Charlie, and I can't imagine how bad he must smell to get that nickname. Swamp Gas Charlie wears a bulletproof vest, so using your whip will easily defeat him, and you'll be able to pick up the vest and use it in the next stage, which is the final one. But first, Gordon's final message, and it may be his strangest one. He can see that our love for Annabelle is strong, but he can't let us have her? What is going on here, Gordon? I thought this was a revenge thing. Do you have feelings for Annabelle? Are you hoping that there's going to be some kind of weird Stockholm Syndrome thing going on here and that she'll suddenly be into you? Because it's not happening, buddy. Stage 9 is the Perilous Plantation Parlor. And now we can personally make Gordon take his hands off of Annabelle, because it's time to fight him. If we have the whip and the bulletproof vest, he's actually pretty easy. Just go all the way to the bottom of the screen and make sure to walk away from Gordon so that he's never close enough to you to kick you. Instead, he'll try to shoot you with his gun and the bullets will just bounce off of you. Right after he fires his gun, he's actually pretty vulnerable to whip attacks, and if you can catch him in one of the corners, you may be able to hit him multiple times. You'll see if you let him get too close, he'll start kicking you, or he may even grab you and deal additional damage. But if you just keep him far away and whip whenever he shoots, you should be able to easily defeat Gordon without taking a single hit. Gordon is almost too easy, but he's not the real final boss. The real final boss are the heirs to the throne. Rocky and Rocco. Hooray Rocco! They come out from the bottom, so you may be able to get a few opportunistic hits as they come out. And then the best way to fight these guys is to do this little dance with them, where you walk them around in a circular pattern, which is something that they're naturally inclined to do, and they do seem to want to drift next to each other. So let them walk around in a circle, and whenever you have a good distance between them because you're on opposite sides of the circle, throw in a couple whip attacks. You don't ever want to let these guys get close enough to grab you or to hit you with a punch. So they have a pretty decent range on that punch, so you want to keep them very far away. 
and if they do grab you, you may have an opportunity to escape without getting damaged. Whenever one of these guys will grab you, they'll wait for the other one to come over and pummel you. So if you rapidly tap like left, right, left, right, left, right, you could get out of it, and then you can try to resume this pattern. At first it seems like these guys are just never going to die. Their life bar just doesn't move, and you'll start to wonder, maybe the whip doesn't work. Maybe we have to use something else to damage them, but no. No, they just have a ton of health. And after a while, you'll notice that the life bar does begin to deplete. If you do get hit and lose your whip, it is very important that you go and pick your whip back up because that's the only way that you're going to be able to effectively damage these guys. And if you focus enough attacks on a single one of them, you will be able to kill one of the two, and then you will only be dealing with one of the two bosses. So that's going to make it a lot easier. So with just Rocco left here, we will continue to whack him with our whip, and in very short time, he will go down, and we will have beaten Bayou Billy. Just take your time here though, you don't want to get overzealous at the end. These guys can deal you a ton of damage if you mess around. And after that, Annabelle will come running out and give you a big hug. We've done it, we've beaten Bayou Billy, but what if you don't have the bulletproof vest in the whip? Well, that's gonna make it a little bit tougher. Against Gordon, I like to fight him at the top of the screen here. What he seems to do is he'll walk around you for some reason, and you can try to get him with a few kicks whenever his back is turned. It's difficult to hit him with jump kicks, so I don't recommend trying the jump kicks, and you do not want to let Gordon get very far away from you, or he'll pull out his gun and start shooting. So he does seem to jump out of the way of a lot of your attacks, which is pretty obnoxious, and if he gets too close, he will kick you, or he'll grab you and punch you, which will deal even more damage. And his attacks deal a ton of damage if he gets you. But this is the best way to deal with him. He's easiest to hit if you get him from behind, so if he turns his back to you, try to catch him with a kick whenever he does that. You usually have to walk down a step, and watch wherever his shadow is. You want to line yourself up with his shadow, that's how you'll know that your kick is going to land. But after a few kicks, you will be able to defeat him, and you may think that Rocky and Rocco are going to be impossible to beat without the whip, but if you don't have the bulletproof vest, they actually have a lot less health. So you're going to use your jump kicks. These guys are much bigger than Gordon, so... Despite Gordon being short, that does give him an advantage against jump kicks. And we're going to use a similar pattern here. Whenever you jump kick this guy, make sure to get away as soon as you jump kick him. Maybe use a second kick to try to escape, because you definitely don't want to get caught by a counterattack. And when he gets low on health, I usually just kind of go for it. And sooner or later, you'll be hugging Annabelle, and we'll have beaten by you Billy without the whip, and without the bulletproof vest. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. And cheesy is probably an understatement when you're talking about this ending. It's like pizza covered in Velveeta. But in the end, they give each other an embrace and a kiss. And then they stand in front of this archway, and we get to see the full cast of characters. To be completely honest, I always thought that the silly pun names for most of the enemies were something that the person who wrote the instruction manual just made up, but no. Whenever you watch the ending, you see that these were the definite intended names for the enemies. 
even Swamp Gash Charlie. And once we see the names of the final bosses, the screen will fade to black, and it will be time to roll the credits. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat the adventures of Bayou Billy and rescue Annabelle from Godfather Gordon and his goons. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more criminal empires to crush. So that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.